Hi everybody, this is Ben Hansen from MinMax. Uh, I'm gonna take you on a brief tour to show you how the MinMax studio was constructed, how much everything costs, because the great secret about building a podcast or video studio is that you don't have to be a genius to do it, you just have to know how to Google a ton of stuff. All right, so here's the overall set for the MinMax show, which is our podcast that airs every single Thursday on iTunes, YouTube, uh, everywhere you get podcasts. These microphones, the Shure SM7B, you will probably see them all over the place. You'll see them on the Joe Rogan podcast, so many different YouTube videos. They use these. They've kind of become a standard. I remember their big pitch is, hey, these are technically the microphones that Michael Jackson recorded Thriller with. So if you also are desperate to be associated with Michael Jackson, I recommend the Shure SM7B. They cost anywhere from $300 to $400 a piece. Obviously, you'll also need XLR cables, which will run to a mixer, which I'll show you in a little bit. On the audio front, things are pretty cheap and easy here. Uh, literally, I just got a bunch of black blankets, hung it up on the wall just to try and deaden the echo in the space a little bit. Also put some sound dampening on the ceiling. This was $40 on Craigslist. I'm sure there's plenty of recording studios that have left over for this type of thing. And I literally just put thumbtacks in to help deaden it a little bit more in the ceiling because obviously with a ceiling this low, it's going to echo something fierce. And so I've kind of built this studio out twice from a tech level. The first time uh, I got just MacBook Pro, little 13-incher. Uh, and I originally ran everything into this. Then, you know, there's hundreds of dollars of dongles that you need for this thing. It's just a disaster, obviously. I love editing on MacBooks. Uh, I'm really comfortable doing that. I've been doing it for a long time. But I wouldn't recommend it for building a studio and having it be the heart of the studio, which was the original plan. It just everything running into... Apple products is going to be a little bit more finicky. Ah, the gaming PC here at MinMax. We should focus on that. Uh, that was purchased from funds from Patreon. It has an RTX 2080 in there for the graphics card, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, some cool LEDs which reflect off the table, so I actually need to turn those off at some point. Now, if you've seen MinMax content before, you're probably familiar with this uh, set here, but uh, I'll show you what I'm seeing. Oh, Christ. Uh, blinding lights. Uh, an Xbox One. We have the camera. We have... The small door. So the main camera we use here at MinMax is the Lumix GH5. It's a very affordable way to have the capability of creating 4K content, which at some point you never know down the road, we might want to film all of our content at 4K. So I'm trying to future-proof it to some extent here. The other nice thing about the Lumix GH5, obviously it has a full-size HDMI output. In addition to the Lumix, we also have a GoPro 7, which is the last edition of the GoPro to accept uh, HDMI out. Thanks to everybody's support on Patreon, we were able to purchase this and put it overhead, and that's going to be for tabletop coverage coverage in the future. And so one of the trickiest parts about building out a studio like this is running the video signal into a PC and having it especially intermingling with gameplay. Uh, there are several different ways to do this. What I'm super excited about is Blackmagic actually sent us the ATEM Mini. The ATEM Mini is brand new. And just to be clear, they did send us this to kind of test it out like for a beta version, but I'm happy to show it off because it really is miraculous. So with the ATEM Mini, it has four HDMI inputs, so we can run the camera, the Lumix GH5, directly into that. Whatever signal you plug in first, that becomes the default signal, and everything else for the HDMI inputs scales to that resolution. So obviously you can plug in four different cameras, you can then cut between that, and it's so nice to have outside of the software, which you can also download to have even more control, just physically being able to press these buttons. So you can do multiple cameras, since this is a video game focused uh, YouTube channel here, we were really interested in doing uh, gameplay feed and mixing gameplay in with this. And the really awesome part is there's a built-in little picture-in-picture -picture function, so you can literally just press a button, turn on, change the position, and all this stuff is also customizable in the software if you want to set specific keys or DVEs, that's a little more advanced stuff, but all the flexibility you would want from a high-end ATEM device is still available in that software, but just to have it really, especially on the PC, just plug and play for all this stuff, for running the camera in there, running gameplay in there, and just being able to have easy, ready-to-go picture-in-picture. I think it's just a game-changer for anybody interested in creating simply produced gaming content in particular here. You can also run uh, audio channels in here. I don't personally. I like the flexibility, and I wanted to run the audio back out to headphones on the desk here, so I'll show you that in a little bit. So I actually bypass the audio for the A10 Mini, but if you want to make it quick and easy, you could also run the audio through this thing. It'll go right into the computer, which then, you know, I'd recommend OBS, which is just free software. And the nice thing is OBS interacts so easily with the ATEM Mini. It is just bam, ready to go. Back in 2013, Jason Astriker, who's at Giant Bomb and I, uh, we created the Game Informer Studio and we were looking for different devices. We eventually landed on buying a broadcast picks, uh, the Flint. Uh, which cost about $30,000. And even back then, it was like, oh, we could probably do this in a cheaper way, but let's just go all out. Let's get the professional level thing. Genuinely, the A10 Mini 
replaces that. If this thing existed, this thing would be the heart of the Game Informer Studio. We don't really need more than four inputs. It's just so quick and easy. It's a delight. Uh, I can do 1080 60, which is all we need realistically here. Let's see, let's stay on the video signal front. So we have just the one cable so we can quickly hot swap the orange HDMI cable there to any console that we want to capture gameplay from. The video is then split, one going into the TV and then one going into the ATEM Mini here. Obviously for capturing from the PC, if you're streaming from a different PC than you're playing on, it would be super easy to swap that stuff around because we only have the one gaming PC and it's also our broadcast PC at this point. Uh, that's all coming from the same spot. So that's a slightly different setup with an OBS, but that's a whole nother thing. Also have an HDMI signal switcher here just so I can do a hot swap between the PC versus console gameplay. Just so I don't have to unplug HDMI cables all the time. This TV is nothing fancy. I believe this is actually Jeffum's old TV from Game Informer that we got rid of a while ago when Game Informer upgraded to 4K. Uh, but hey, it gets the job done. And the nice thing about this as well is that it has analog audio out. And so we can grab that and that's actually the game audio or whatever's running on the TV it could be PC or anything like that. And we have that running into our mixer. And so we have the mixer over here, gameplay audio running into that. All four microphones that we have set up are also running into this. The weird thing is because we have carpet in the MinMax studio, there was a lot of interference. And so you get this rubber little mat and it helps hide the cables in addition to hopefully nullifying out some unnecessary static. And so we have all those running into the mixer we then have the headphone out and so that's running back to underneath the table where we purchased a headphone amp so that when we're playing games we can all put on headphones we can hear ourselves we can also hear the gameplay the trickiest thing is just figuring out how to get the video signal and the audio signal in sync and it is a little bit different in our case between the pc and the console capture but that's just genuinely clapping 3,000 times and then recalibrating the, the millisecond delay. Let's see, lighting we can touch on real quick. We have three lights, we can adjust the color temperature, we can adjust the intensity. I do have a light behind us here, um, which you probably noticed casting us in a, in a holy glow. It'd be nice to have it as the backlight and have it actually up there, but the ceiling's too low in the Minmax studio, so we can't do that. And so the light down there uh, is going to have to do just to help us pop and separate from the background a little bit. Also, if we put it anywhere else, it casts too much light on the actual curtain and then just the folds on the curtain are more noticeable and you know it doesn't look great uh with minmax we edit all the videos in adobe premiere it's a subscription which is a little bit frustrating but it's not that expensive and then we use audition as a backup also for backup audio this is very cheap and easy um, but while we're recording the podcast or any content you might notice that I actually just have my phone, my iphone 7 and I just use the voice recorder app and then I just put it in this secret flap right there like that as a backup recording just in case everything s's the bed oh and don't forget to purchase uh an old crt monitor and also pokemon stadium for the background of your set it seems really important and people in the youtube comments like to comment on it weird old meat hooks in the ceiling for some reason we'll try and figure out something to do with those at some point Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. And again, I hope you're motivated to try and build something on your own. Realistically, if you want to record podcasts with your friends, which you totally should, there's nothing stopping you. Uh, you would need one blue Yeti. Put it on a certain setting. Uh, you're good to go. You can go so much simpler than we're going here. And I should mention that a lot of this equipment came directly from funding on Patreon, patreon.com slash minmax2n. So thank you to everybody who has supported this mission so far. You've helped us create a pipeline that's going to be really sustainable moving forward for creating content, bringing people in, having a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. And I'd appreciate it if you support uh, Minmax on Patreon. Check us out. We're creating a lot of content that celebrates games, friends, and getting better. Thanks, everybody. Content like this is supported by the community on patreon.com slash minmax. And if you continue to support us and you're here long enough, you can even eventually hear me talk about Breath of the Wild 2. Check us out. Thank you so much.